All right. Hey guys. So, um, no starting soon. Na, 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 na. Here we are. Um, so, Costas is connected and War Goblin is connected. It's uh, two minutes uh, to go. In two minutes, they're gonna play their match, and I'm already following. Um, <coughs> War Goblin, who's on my team. So this is the last um, match, the last couple of games in in the match between these two teams <laughs> I can't remember the name of uh, <laughs> the teams um, we're leading by two points and this is the last match so um, if War Goblin loses both it's gonna be a tie and if War Goblin manages to get a win or a draw uh, we would win so okay we're the Inglorious Forkers and we're playing against Team 5. That's the name of Costa's team. Team 5. And uh, we'll see. It's about to start, I guess. I'll try to change a bit the aspect of the stream to be able to show the pieces. So forgive me. I think they're starting now. Forgive me for... yeah, exactly. Give me just one second, I'm trying to fix the layout a bit. So you can see the... Um, you know, the pieces and... I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna hide this. I'm gonna hide all of this. This and this. Okay, I'm um, simpler view. And okay, first game where Goblin is black. I'm gonna be rooting for him. <coughs> and they're playing e45, knight three, knight c6, bishop c5. This is all very standard. Uh, typical would be to play knight c3 or castle. Castle is okay. Knight f6. There's the sacrifice on f7 that. Yeah, <laughs> they're playing too fast. Uh, this is 11 plus 11. They seem to be playing fast. So after bishop g5, which is normal, you don't usually want to play d6. You, you, you want to, yeah, exactly. You want to play bishop b7 to prevent um, issues like white could take on f6 and then drop a knight at, at d5. So far, it's all very standard. And we'll see. I'm not a big fan of this opening, although I <laughs> I happen to play it a lot because I don't know. It's it seems to be very common, uh, but it's like boring and I don't know. It's all very symmetrical, as you can see. Um, main difference is this maybe and this, although the bishop can go there. Um, and of course, white is a tempo ahead, so knight d5. Would probably happen at some point. H3 is a bit slow to, to my. But I, I guess Costas is worried about bishop g4 followed by knight d4 ideas. Yeah, feels a bit slow. So if I was white, I would consider 
taking here and 95 maybe or stuff like that i don't know um just playing active now after h3 um three create some create some weakness there that could be used for example 94 could already try to exploit the dark squares like for example after takes then some control of e3 but feels a bit artificial too uh okay 95 so i guess war goblin wants a bishop for some reason and it's trying to cash one um not sure what for but i'm expecting knight takes b3 i mean after yeah after 95 so what does he want the bishop for let's see maybe he wants to drop bishop here and start attacking some point i don't know uh costas has a knight should be should be worried about that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Um, this rook got developed. Not saying that that's important for the position. The kings are on the other side, but at some point, if 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 white ever needs a pawn to to complete uh, their attack, rook takes a seven <laughs> could be an option because. That would threaten to take another rook, so probably black, probably it would be a forcing move. Not that a pawn would be great now, but at some point, if some attack starts, like knight at h6, still not working probably. But maybe after some trades, knight e5 has the problem that uh, this bishop is defended only once, but. All those forcing lines, of course, you should consider. Um, anyway, uh, it's black to move now, and <laughs> black is thinking what to do with the bishop. Uh, I mean, he took a bishop. He he spent two tempi, knight a5, knight takes b3, for that specific reason. So I expected a quick follow up, but it seems like knight a5 was just a move just to play a move and okay one option is of course to drop that bishop on f4 because arguably white's most active piece is that bishop on g5 although it's not very it's not very challenging right now okay that's a very very nice move to do starts creating some problems um, asking some questions, uh, but if bishop takes f3 is not a problem, then knight g3, yeah, exactly, that's what I was going to say. If this wasn't a problem, then knight could drop, could be dropped at g3, but okay, I guess now we have to take here and maybe drop knight there after. <coughs> I don't see any good alternative because you don't want to play bishop g6, do you? Okay. <laughs> um, now, for example, a pawn could be annoying. A pawn here could be annoying, but I guess rook takes a7 is still too premature. Okay, so white is taking a knight, um, which I'm not particularly concerned about, I guess. Um, but yeah, okay, I, I, I would say white has some initiative, especially after this passive bishop g6. It's a bit solid. It's a bit solid, yes, but also a bit passive. So now white is sort of threatening to take here and then drop an, another knight on d5, or maybe a bishop on g5 after that. So yeah, white is sort of threatening to be active right now and start having active play. What could black do? I don't know. Bishop at h4 could be an option. c6 is, is definitely not a good move. I think it's not because it's <laughs> forcing white to do what white wants to do. And other than that, I don't think that's a particularly useful move. Um, well, it prevents another knight to go there, like now, but bishop at g5, knight at e7. Yeah, this is not looking, not looking great now. Actually, after queen e6, he can even drop knight at c7 instead of e7. If he wants to just collect some material. So, hmm. 
I'm starting to dislike this game for for my team. Let's see if if Black can find some resource here. There are always resources. Okay, now he goes for the passive move, and uh, the only one that saves the queen in, in, in this move. But yeah, sometimes when things start going bad, you need to start looking for sacrifices. I'm not saying queen six is not the best move. It's probably, but. Hmm. Okay, let's see, let's see. In Crazy House, you always have resources. Resources. Uh, now I guess White is deciding whether to drop the knight at c7 or at e7. Both both seem really interesting. Uh, at e7, a bit more active. At e7, uh, sorry, at e7, a bit more active. At c7, collecting material immediately. Um, also, then a7 is going to be hanging which would give an additional square for the knight. But okay, he goes for the active option. Good news for for my team is now that now after the only logical move and takes takes, I expect him to open the f-file. I hope he opens the f-file. Um, and after that, black will have some activity. And white didn't win materials, so... Game still opened. I guess. Well, now you have to sacrifice a piece here, probably. I don't think moving the queen would be great. Although maybe it is. Maybe queen f7 is not such a terrible move, is it? Uh, importantly, white has dropped all the material already, so white has no more pieces to drop. So after queen f7 uh, and let's say bishop trade, um, maybe I should mind a7, maybe I should take with this one. And then he only has a bishop to drop, and we have bishop and two knights. So, okay, so he wants to regain with queen probably, which which seems good. Because then after bishop at g4 again, we can drop at d7 or e6. Although that's probably a bad, a bad sequence, because white can keep dropping at g4 the bishop. I mean, maybe not bad, but not good. Uh huh. So I think that that's what I would play with with White. I would take on c8 and then drop back at g4, attacking whatever is on c8, just to have some initiative. Uh, because other than that, I mean, White has no immediate threats. I think no immediate attack and nothing to drop. So, yeah. That's the most logical move, bishop takes c8. Then you can keep some initiative, dropping back at g4, attacking whatever is at c8. But maybe it's not that big initiative there. Hmm? If, for example, queen here, bishop at g4, the queen, instead of dropping something here, if the queen moves, like, I would probably put it on the 8 back to control e6, then white has nothing to drop. So maybe there's something better than bishop at g4. What about bishop at h6? Because the two knights are ready to attack. They're not immediately attacking, but they're ready. So, for example, okay, that that wins a pawn. I miss that. Um, this would be extremely crazy and probably losing because there's knight at f7 later. Oh no, he has no knights. Oof, I'm seeing ghosts. Um, seems extremely risky, but the fact is, after it takes, we can drop knight here, maybe. And then the queen probably has to keep an eye on, on an eye on e2 to prevent knight at e2. Although, it seems too crazy. It seems too crazy to give a rook. There's rook at f8 later. Yeah, that's probably a stupid idea by me. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't want to be passive here, so I'm thinking about sacrificing this exchange here. How could we do that? Mm. It's not an easy position. Bishop, bishop at f4, maybe? So if he takes here, we can take here. Is that too crazy? 
yeah, it seems crazy because actually that improves the night. Hmm. Okay, I don't want to. I wouldn't want to move. Ah, I wouldn't want to do that. Okay, so now black is gonna start. Sorry, white is gonna start collecting, and the problem is we don't have pawns to drop. So this is this is hanging to, and we don't really want to drop a bishop there. Although maybe it's what we need to do. Ah. Hmm. Not liking this. Black. <coughs> Black didn't attack in the whole in the whole game, and and white is collecting some material, and also a knight is coming here, and that that's probably the most annoying. So I would probably defend this. I'm not sure whether bishop at f6 or knight at d7 defend so 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 that there's no knight landing on e5, and we can take it. We're losing the pawn anyway, but at least to ensure that what, what lands there is the bishop, not the knight. Although the bishop is also lying. <laughs> yeah. Ay, 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 ay. Also, time situation is a bit worrying here. Maybe. <clears throat> Maybe bishop at f4 is not so stupid now. Um, it's a pity that that war goblin never used the dark squares after h3 was played. Okay, bishop at f4 was played finally. Just checking that I'm recording, not streaming, <laughs> because he he played the move I was saying. Okay. Um, so bishop takes e3 is sort of a threat. But I guess bishop takes e5 is is possible now because if bishop takes e3 he can take with the bishop. Still, bishop takes g3 is interesting to consider to distract the bishop. Although then knight e5 could happen, but we have a move. I think from the three captures, the one I want is the one that doesn't allow a knight to attack a rook. So probably I could take on g3. But at some point we need to start dropping knights because we have two knights in hand and if we take on g3 we have a third one. Um, we need some activity. Maybe we don't take here? I don't see a better move. Why can't take with the pawn? There's no there's no need to take with the bishop, but yeah, taking with the bishop threatens knight e5 and keeps the, the, the structure intact. But taking with pawn also incorporates the rook to the attack. I, I think this, this position has to be winning for white. But still, I would take on g3. That's what I would do here. I don't see any move. I mean, knight at e3. Knight at, knight at e3 was possible. Yeah. Maybe knight at e3 was, was a good alternative. And then if pawn takes, take on g3. Or maybe it was just too much. Okay, so he took on g3. Which makes sense. But time is time situation is... is it's not good. I and mean, Costas is having a good position and, and a lot of time in the clock. Okay, he takes with the bishop, so he clearly wants to keep the he's playing for like two results. Like, okay, let's try to keep this as safe as possible and and do our threats. Makes sense. So I would try to control this square. Maybe bishop at f6, which is really sad to do. Maybe Knight at d7 is sad too. Bishop at f6 is risky because after bishop takes, you have to take with the pawn. And then, yeah, well, at least white has no knights to drop, so the only knight to be worried about is this one coming here. Like, for example, after the bishop here takes, takes, there's no knight at h6 for the moment. 
especially if we don't drop any knights yet. Hmm. Bishop f6 would be my move probably because. Okay, so he wants at least he wants to play active. The problem is knight five comes with a very big threat, very very big threat. So we don't have time to take on g3. That, I think that's a problem. And after knight five, we need to move the rook. Oh, well, I would take it without even thinking. Whatever White wants to do, uh, we we need to ask White to prove it because, <laughs> yeah, any other move would be dropping important material. I don't really, I don't really believe Bishop at e6. I don't know what was that. I don't know what's Costa's idea. Let's find out. Uh, I mean, if he had a bishop to drop here, although even that we could drop here. Oh, he's writing in the chat. Oh my god, just gave the bishop like that. <laughs> okay, so he, he, he just dropped it. That's, that's, that's good for my team. <laughs> Okay, that was fortunate. Still, 95 is possible. Okay, that pawn was defend is defended by the bishop we're attacking, so I'm I'm happy to see that move too. I don't think it's it's something we should be very worried about because after knight takes the pawn will be undefended and maybe maybe we could even consider taking it. Although after knight takes pawn takes. I would probably go bishop at b6 check to take it with a bishop. I think that makes more sense to attack g3 and control uh, e5. He goes for bishop at b6 first, which is kind of strange because I think knight takes e3 was more forcing. Um, uh, but okay, he's trying to be tricky, I guess. Um, he's threatening to take a piece for free now, as well as the pawn. But yeah. In general, I prefer forcing stuff <laughs> with checks and so. Um, because yes, now for example, White had this option and I'm sure he had some other options. So he's um, emptying the square to, to, to go with the knight there. So maybe bishop at h6 makes sense. Um, and also now if we take, he can take with bishop. So this pawn is not moved. So yeah, I think I would have, oh, allowing this, I don't know, I don't know. So let's say knight g5, queen d7, knight takes, and we take with queen, or, yeah, I would take with queen. Well, it's an interesting exchange sacrifice, because knights are very useful for the attack. And at least War Goblin is trying to use all of the pieces. The, so, so, okay, maybe, maybe he didn't see an IG5, but, but at least from, from a positional point of view, I like that he's trying to use all of the pieces. No, I don't like an IG5. I mean, I think he missed it. And now probably Queen D7. Queen D7, pawn, pawn at E6. It's annoying. So maybe queen e8. Oof. Because I think I want to regain with the queen on f7. Losing control of the back rank is a bit worrying when you're losing a rook. Uh, we're losing a rook. <laughs> so, so I think I want to re, re, um, recapture. Yeah, but this allows pawn at e6. Ah, I. Uh, this is not good. This is not good now. Uh, maybe we need to start thinking about sacrificing the queen. We have two knights and bishop. We need to. I think Blank needs to to use start using them. And oh, that was so lucky. That was so lucky. He didn't he didn't drop the pawn at e six. 
<laughs> but now he has a rook. Okay, that's probably not the best because we have the bishop controlling that. But also we're not forced to take it. So even knight takes g3 could be a move. And takes, takes, and if he drops something at e8, oh. But bishop there, I don't understand. Bishop there, I don't... Okay, I understand. I mean, prevents promotion. But the problem is now after queen takes, there's rook at, rook at d8. Uh, now we need to... If, if we drop rook here, he just trades and go rook at d8 again. So, so we're losing the queen, basically, in all lines. And this is not looking good now. Yeah, this is looking completely lost now. I think Black needed to launch the attack probably a bit earlier. Okay, first first here I think this was a mistake, but even well this was obviously a blunder, but the opponent gave this option. Here maybe I don't know, knight takes g3, start attacking. Let's see the let's see how the game continues. If Costa C rook takes rook followed by rook at d8, I think it's gonna be game over very soon because it's not just losing the queen, it's that black's king is getting checkmated very soon because for example after we block the checks here, he will have queen takes queen takes knight and knight at f7 with checkmate. Um, yeah, okay, that's that's the best attempt, of course. Um, and White is very close to winning now. The, the immediate sacrifice doesn't work. This is good for us. <laughs> um, but... But even bishop e5 could be an idea. Because we cannot take it because of queen at f8 followed by queen takes h5. So bishop e5 is a move here. Probably a very annoying one. Uh, he can drop pawn somewhere too. Um, pawn at f7, but okay. Maybe that's not the worst. Pong, pong at e7 too. Could be a move. Um, even slow moves as d4 are not bad. Costas hmm. taking his time. He probably knows he should be winning here. But black has three knights, so you have to be precise with white. Sometimes you yeah you reach these positions like in my final game yesterday. You win material, your opponent king is in trouble, but the material you win is a queen and then it's not so easy to find you, you need to find a precise continuation because suddenly if you don't find the checkmate you you can be losing very fast. So I like that Kostas is thinking. Reminds me of that quote by, by Grishuk when he was doing a banter blitz online and he said, because his opponent was thinking, he said, I like when my opponent thinks, that, that, that means he doesn't know what to do. And I like that Kostas is thinking, so pawn at g4, that's probably not the most aggressive move ever, but maybe he wants the knight, that's, ah, that's his point. That the intended knight takes g3 move for war goblin. Costas is inviting war goblin to do it. Uh, well, he has to because the knight is going to be lost anyway. Uh, so Costas wants the knight, but not taking it with the queen. That was too much. So Costas wants the knight to drop at f7. But I would have taken on g3. G5 seems that it gives the knight any, anyway, 
and it's a bit more weakening. Now this pawn is, is going to be annoying as well. Controlling g6 just in case knight at g6 could work. Knight at g6 could work actually. Yeah. And now this is this is very dangerous. Okay, we have to take because the knight is defended. There's no point in going here. So we have to take, and after takes, we need to defend h7 somehow. Maybe rook at h6, maybe knight at g5, knight f6, uh, bishop at g8. It's gonna be it's gonna be very dangerous, but 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 we have to take the knight. We have to take it. Because king g8, queen at h8, king f7, I don't believe it. I mean, queen f3 check, or even queen takes h7 could be enough. Uh, and that would be terrible for, for king. No, we need to take the knight. Come on, come on, goblin. <laughs> then, if, then if we take the knight, we have four knights. Ugh. Ugh. I'm thinking maybe maybe there's something even better for white than going queen at h8. Nah, what can be better than going queen at h8? Queen at h8 and queen takes h7. Seems fairly decent. Well, maybe he wants, <laughs> maybe he goes like this. Knight takes h4 could be an option. Okay, only move. When you only have one move, yes, play fast, play fast. So now, um, these two are hanging. Maybe that's what War Goblin is counting on. But this king is getting checkmated, <laughs> so that's not good. So, two options here queen f3 check or queen takes h7. I think I would go queen takes h7 because I don't see a clear checkmate stick. Oh, that's also winning, of course. Yeah. Well done. No, after takes, you had to go king, king. Yeah, it was checkmate anyway. GG Costas. Okay. I, I even missed that, that move. Yeah. Okay. So the match is, uh, is really close now. We're um, seven, we, seven to six. Seven to six. This is the last game and it will decide the match. Wow, a Spanish opening. In crazy house, never seen that before. Bishop e3. Let's see if with the white pieces we get something. A draw, a draw could be enough, but draws are so rare in crazy house. Taking with the rook is interesting there. Although I'm expecting bishop takes, yeah. And uh, now bishop b3. And we have a pawn in hand. Oh! Yeah, for a second I thought that was possible, but yeah, okay. Like a pawn is a pawn, yeah. Um, maybe taking the knight is a bit too much. Maybe, maybe World Goblin is playing too fast right now, but okay. Can drop a knight at f5. And pawn at h6, so this is looking good. Three pawns on a knight. This is looking good. And this pawn cannot be pushed right now. Okay, that's a bit scary. Pawn at f4 could be an option. We don't really need to take here. We don't need to take there. We don't need. We don't need to allow bishop takes h2. It's probably nothing, but we don't need to allow it. I guess in, in Crazy House it's it's really difficult to, to keep control. Like yeah, I'm gonna remove all counterplay. That's not that's not always possible. Okay, so black took back on c6 uh, with a pre-move. So I would play safe, maybe pong at f4, pong at g3. I'm a bit concerned about this, especially now that black has another knight in hand. Uh, I wouldn't allow any stuff on h2. I would drop on here or here. I know those are probably not the best moves. Bishop at f4 is interesting too. I mean, we're material up. We don't need any funky business to happen. Okay, that's probably the last thing 
to define h2 that I would do because bishop at g4 makes sense now for black. But okay, bishop at g4 maybe we go. Oh no, we already dropped the knight. We cannot go knight at, at f5 anymore. Hmm. Well, we can start dropping pawns. Bishop at g4, maybe maybe pawn at h3 is <coughs> is good. Um. So maybe what what Goblin is trying to threaten is e5. So he found a move that defends h2 and threatens e5. Maybe that was his point with knight at f3. I don't like it for a number of reasons, but but maybe that that was the idea. Now Costas is thinking, if I was black, I would probably drop here a bishop, or here a knight or a bishop. Those would be my candidate moves, I think. Um, well, interesting how you always have more ideas than two. Uh, I don't think knight takes e4 works. Uh, bishop at h5, maybe. Rook there, stopping this idea, but yeah, a bit slow. Which I like for my team. <laughs> okay, so pawn at h6, rawr. I mean, Goblin has many pawns. I think he should start using them to, to attack. Okay, pinning the knight. Mm. Mm, I don't see a real threat because I think bishop takes would be good f for black in general. I don't know. Um, so, for example, if black goes h6 now, bishop takes, queen takes. I still like white because we have three pawns in hand and another bishop. But I think we had better options than this. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, but okay, maybe Goblin's idea is to take the knight to drop it at f5. I'm trying to understand the plan after bishop g5. Um, could be an option. But I don't know, h6, bishop takes, um, queen takes, knight at f5, maybe even queen takes b2 is an option. It sounds crazy, but why not? Um, knight at f5, is that so strong? Hmm. Could be. Could be. Well, I like I like White's position. Let's see if we can enjoy this game. <clears throat> what can Black do? Uh, knight at g4, maybe, or Bishop at g4 again. Bishop at g4 was probably good one move earlier instead of Rook e8. To justify Rook e8, maybe maybe Knight at e5. But if if I'm going to play Knight at e5. I think I would start with bishop at g4. Because then knight at e5 will come with tempo. Either after trading on f3 or if allowed without trading on f3. So. Wow. <laughs> That's passive. I like it. <laughs> now knight e5 makes sense. Hitting the weaknesses. I mean, the bishop left <laughs> the control of this square, and I'm not really sure why. For um, also, pawn at h6 and start attacking, start building an attack. Um, okay, collecting a pawn here. Um, I guess not concerned of rook takes b2 because this rook is on e8 now. 
I like it goblin I guess he's gonna take here no other move makes sense I think yeah now Costas has to decide okay he goes for that now this is hanging as well and the rook could attack f6 from there which is <laughs> nice so I would take here probably yeah my gut feeling tells me okay trade 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 and and white has a good position for pawns in hand if we also get pieces we should be doing fine okay maybe rook takes a6 is an alternative but knight at b4 could be a problem wow I don't like that I mean we take a rook but the price bishop takes 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 and how can we use the rook yeah I think it's a bit too much for the rook okay maybe maybe rook takes a6 uh, knight at b4 again and then would it make sense to sacrifice there? How can we use the bishop? Um, I don't know what's black thinking right now. I don't see any other move but taking the queen. Well, if there's only the only alternative would be knight at h3, which is the check. <laughs> don't believe it. Okay, and now knight e5 maybe. I mean, rook takes a6 is a move. It is a move. Um, I don't know how can we use the knight, so I wouldn't rush it to take on f6. We have pawns, so again, pawn at h6, pawn at d5. All those moves are tempting. Pawn at e5, even. Okay, he goes for that. That allows knight at b4, I think. And then probably best is to sack. But I'm not sure. Actually, that helps the knight to control some squares as well. Mm. Of course, black has some other options besides that. He has bishop at b7. He went bishop b7, but even bishop at b5 for bishop at b7 was interesting as well. Okay, now rook takes f6, of course. That would be a no-brainer for me. We take a knight and we're winning control of h6. Rook takes f6 has to be has to be very very strong now. Because either he gives h6 immediately or after the, the bishop trade. But he's gonna give h6 for our knight, for the knight we're taking on f6. And that's gonna be a strong attack. Especially because we have rook and pawn uh, and four pawns in hand. Rook takes f6 is no, a no brainer here. Yeah, I think black had to keep this here with knight at b4, bishop at b7. Now, now I hope goblin sees this move. Probably the strongest. Maybe there's pawn at a7 as well, keeping this threat alive, but. I would do it immediately. I mean, it's probably black cannot take the rook. Probably the best move by, for black would be something like, or he takes with the bishop and then doesn't take the bishop. Yeah, it's tough for black. I think rook takes f6 is very, very strong. Maybe black has to play knight at g4 after rook takes f6 or what come on goblin come on goblin you can do it He's thinking a lot, so that's. I, I said before I, I I was 
happy that my that Costas was thinking a lot, but now I'm happy that Goblin is thinking a lot <laughs> because he might see he might be considering this. Um, because he's he has the upper hand. So in the previous, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm a bit biased. <laughs> Oh, I'm so nervous now. <laughs> and then in... So it's almost four. In three hours and a bit, Joey is playing her, her match and I cannot watch it live. Hi, come on, Goblin. I mean, there are other strong moves, but I think this is the simplest. Pong at a7 could be interesting. Pong at d7, I don't believe it. Pong at a7, okay, okay, okay. Now black has the alternative to, if, if black is worried about rook takes f6, black should probably take the rook and accept the queen sacrifice. But, okay, improve the queen a bit, but still allows rook takes f6. I hope I hope Goblin goes for it because now after Queen A8 I don't see any other idea to justify A7. I mean Rook at B8 is a bad move. Probably. Okay, maybe not so yeah, it's a bad move because Bishop takes. So come on Goblin. Come on, you can do it. We're down on time again, no. Well, rook at b8, let's calculate a bit. Rook at b8, bishop takes a6, rook takes queen. If rook takes queen, we can drop the queen at b8 or not? I think we can. But uh, he has many blockers already f8 protected, so he can block there with uh, dropping a piece. So I don't think all this business on the background here on the queen side can help in any way. The attack, I mean. I mean, rook takes f6 is much simpler. And if we drop now at b8, there's no longer rook takes f6 because black will take immediately on a6. So there's no point in trying to trade more material before doing rook takes f6 because if we try to trade more material, there's no longer rook takes f6. So I think. It's now or never. And then later we can drop here to, to, to have another rook in hand if necessary. I don't think it will be necessary though. After rook takes... Pawn, if bishop takes, bishop takes. And if pawn takes, knight h6. Yes! Yes! Come on! We got this. So now that for black it's probably very bad to move this pawn. Black might consider going bishop takes e4 maybe. I mean trying to use the pre no he goes immediately for that, which I like because now bishop takes bishop is no brainer goblin. Come on, you can do it. If you took on f6, I'm expecting bishop takes f6 to to be quickly played. But I also like that he's taking his time. Um, maybe he's trying to find a better move. What can be better than that? What can be better than having access for the knight to h6? Okay, that's an intermediate move, maybe. So I, I guess Goblin likes to put pawns on the seventh rank. Um, those are always annoying. 
he sort of uh, fighting Costas back with with the idea Costas used against him in the previous game when Costas put this pawn on the seventh rank. Okay. I like it. It's a good complement to bishop takes f6. But how about black? Can black sacrifice something now? Like bishop takes bishop, takes, takes. Knight takes. How bad is that for black? Okay. Okay, now now we also have e7. Not, not just e6, h6, sorry, but also e7 for our knight. So bishop takes f6, exactly. Okay, I, I think this is going to be a win, guys. I think this is going to be a win for us. Now, if rook takes d7, for example, there's the typical knight at h6 check. Ah, then. And that's checkmate. Yeah. If rook takes d7, knight at h6 would be checkmate in two. Whenever you have a bishop here, that is really annoying, knight at h6. And in this case, because the bishop is also controlling e7, after knight at h6, king f8. Rook g8 is made because the bishop controlling this. Okay, okay. Knight h6 is made in two. Come on, come on, well, goblin, you can do it. No, okay, that also should win. <laughs> that should also win. I find many times in Crazy House you have these positions like, okay, black, uh, white to move and checkmate in two. And then you have like other 20 moves that win anyway. But sometimes you're winning, you're winning, you're winning, and because you're not checkmating, then you don't win and then you lose. So I prefer to checkmate. Knight at h6 still checkmate here in this position. Knight at h6 is checkmate in the next move. And now we, we have a queen in hand, so it's more clear even. Then queen at g8 is gonna be made in all lines. And if he takes the knight, queen at g7 or queen at h8 is made, of course. So um, it's a it's a very typical idea of crazy house knight at h6, so I have hopes that goblin will see it. Okay, pawn at c6 is definitely not it's definitely not a forced checkmate sequence. But position still very tough for Costas. Now, if Costas drops knight here, I hope Goblin takes it. <laughs> oh, we still have knight defending g1, so we're not checkmated. After knight h3, uh, king g1, king h1, we're not checkmated yet. Okay, okay. I mean, I'm trying to think ways not to win this, but it's hard, so. So I'm confident. I'm very confident right now. Even even if Goblin doesn't see the knight at h6 checkmate, I think this position is so winning, so winning in many ways, that this is going to be a win. That's a good move. That defense, attacks, resourceful move by Costas, and and now there's no longer the checkmate, I think. At least not the immediate one. And now if if white takes the rook, goblin might be scared of knight h3 now. But as we pointed out, knight defends g1, so there's no checkmate. Knight h3, king here. If rook at g1, we have to take with the knight. And that way we're not checkmated. But you never know, he might get scared and drop a pawn here now, or a bishop or something, or maybe something here. That would make more sense, probably. Um, okay, he's not scared of knight h3. Good. But there's also this resource of taking here and dropping a knight here. Uh, yeah, some activity for black. Maybe after rook takes... We could actually play king h1. I mean, that's safest. That's safe. I 
I mean, white we, white is winning all over the place with this king here, this piece here. So so black needs to to go for crazy. Uh, rook takes d2, I think. It's the only move that complicates things. I mean, knight h3 gives white the option to blunder after king h1, rook at g1 gives the option to blunder with rook takes g1 instead of knight takes g1. But I don't think Costas will try that because if, if you see the only move, then then there's nothing. There's nothing else in the position for black. So I guess he's gonna try to complicate with, with rook takes g2, right? Okay, so he goes for that. Well, only move now. And now... Pff, rook at f8? I don't know. Knight takes f2? Or rook at g1 and hope for the blunder? I don't think... I don't think Costas will do it. And if he does it, I don't think Goblin is gonna blunder. Okay, knight takes g1 only move now. Goblin is thinking, that's good. Because he realizes he has more than one move. Yes. Yes. Okay, so Costas tried. Maybe he just considered rook takes d2 was completely losing. Probably it was. And he tried his luck with, <laughs> with uh, giving the option to, to Goblin to blunder. I'm um, checkmating one. Good try, but now I'm even more confident on we winning the match. Now any move is checkmate, taking here, dropping here, uh, dropping knight here, that's checkmate in two. Uh, actually, <laughs> dropping here it was checkmate in one because he had no blockers on f8. <laughs> he had no blockers, even promoting on d8 was checkmate in one. Okay, now... Okay, yes, we won the match, guys. Yes. Can I type for them in the chat? GGs. Um, okay, I'm sorry for my comments. I know I'm not such a strong crazy house player, but I hope at least it was useful or helpful for some of you and I'll stop recording and I'll upload this ASAP to my Twitch channel see you bye bye